most of which make it into the poem, some don't. Um, but yeah, I just brainstorm my ideas and kind of just collate them, put them in order until I'm happy with them. And yeah. So when you write them down, do you sit down and do or do you walk and think or drive or think? Uh, what um, do you normally usually do? Usually when I'm just out living, um, ideas come to me and then I have to go into a dark room, light an incense, maybe a candle and kind of just meditate on the idea. Um, and then, yeah, from there, I, I start brainstorming and... Sounds yeah. scary, man. <laughs> Sounds scary. Yeah, go on and go on. If you could do start with your... Straight in. Uh, <coughs> I'm looking into the camera. Or? This one. This one. When I see community, I turn that second M into an E, them into a we. Pushed into life, out of her legs came a legacy. Beauty for my mother's pain, the cries mark a memory, the spark permeating through this new you, universe. A wake up call to everything in between, from the brain to the heart. With these instruments of life, the symphony began. Melodies from each organ assist in the ecosystem by simply playing its part. The brains from unsung community leaders with world changing ideas that they casually just bring up in talks. The hearts from close neighbours beating life into the idea when it's still just a thought. <sighs> Lungs who help you inhale inspiration, breathing growth and innovation. Optimistic livers who remain. Optimistic livers who remain faithful in removing toxic doubts and disbelief from everyday risky situations. We embrace our, dis our differences for productive integration, hand to hand, fingerprint to fingerprint, caring eyes vigilant for those with ego and fear is made the fault of failure. Just focus on what's best for the collective. You'll feel the coat of arms hugging you, wear their support, Start using the forces. Seven billion people in the world. Who needs machines digging through her flesh, taking minerals? We got human resources. When I see you, I see me. When I see them, I see we. When I see community, I turn that second M into an E. Thank you. So awesome, man. Oh, so mate, awesome. goosebumps, you know? That was wicked. Thank you, thank you. I slipped a few times in there. Still no, 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 it was fantastic. Me. Honestly, the words you use. Mm. The you circling know, round as well, the full. Crazy. Mm. Wow. Thank you know, someday you're going to be a politician, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a challenge for you. Okay. You say you've done it in one hour. Yeah. Why don't you do something for Ikra Bangla? Do something within a few minutes. I'm going to talk to uh, Okay, Miles. okay. Um, Think about something. Okay. Just a challenge. See if you could do it. Okay, um, is there a pen and a paper available? Do it in your mind. In my mind? Leave it in your mind for you. Couple lines. A ah, couple of lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little slogan. Uh, I've got two miles. Sorry, sorry, I leave that with you. Ikrabanga. Think about it. And Ikrabanga, sorry. Ikrabanga, yeah. Ikrabanga, okay. Wow, that was amazing, man. <laughs> yeah, talk I feel, <laughs> feel like I should be bringing something to the a, table if here. If you just like. had a drum there, you was like, boom, baby. Yeah, cool. no, it's <laughs> serious, it's serious. Fantastic. And that's the, I mean, to, to be serious about it, is arts in general are about, I mean, as Ruben has said many times, about getting kids, young people, to engage and to express their feelings in a way that maths and science and history never can. So um, the more people that Ruben gets his work to, the more people can express themselves. Um, and that's great for everyone. Um, I want to ask you, actually, um, how did you find your way? You're a very successful young man. You have... Thank you. You know, no, definitely. So... Tell me, how did you find your way? I'm sure they're up and down. So when you were down, how did you pick up yourself? Mm -hmm. So would you like to, please? Yeah, of course. So um, it began, I mean, I, we said about it sort of very briefly earlier. It began when 
it began quite fun. Me and my friend were sat in a pub, which I don't drink now, but at the time I did. Um, and we literally Googled how to start a company. That was the very beginning of everything. Um, because we had no idea. You were never told you in school. You said you were 18 that time. Yeah, no, well, I was 17 wow. at this time. Because wow. um, you, you're not told in school that you can go out and start a company. A company to me at the time was a, a big corporation that had thousands of people that was run by a guy in suits and everything like that. Um, so that's how we, we started. We started by literally Googling how to start a company. And we took our joint passion, um, which was at the time sales, and we put it into a business. And this was, uh, this was a, few, a number of years back now. So since that, it's changed. Um, and I now take what is, I, I took that circle, actually, to see the, the Venn diagram about what, was, what I was great at, what I loved, what the world needed, and what, I pay wo what wow. pays well. And for me, that's speaking. Uh, you can ask my teachers <laughs> that all I do is chat throughout school. And as Ruben said, a class clown is a skill that it is a skill in itself. Mm. Uh, it's a personality. So I took speaking, which I was good at, and I make appearances like this. I do workshops in schools. Um, I help teach other people to communicate well. Um, and that's something that does all four of those things for me. And I'm so what did you do when you failed? I'm sure you, you had some... Uh, yeah. You can't be successful every day, so you probably done something. How did you pick yourself up? What did you tell yourself? But there are a lot of young people, well, they're the looking the for a little dream, shutters, and that's it. No. Well, that's it. So, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, it's about once, once things do shatter, to be able to find the why in what you're doing. And if there is no why, then, then it goes. So if you're, if you're, a, if you're at a nine to five um, and your boss gives you a bad review, it will discourage you past wanting to leave. Or if there's a, you know, a case of bullying at the office or whatever, you will not want to stay. But if it's something that you care about and that you have a genuine purpose for, like you do here, sharing, uniting people, um, that is a purpose. So if something falls down, mm. you find it a lot easier to pick it back up. Um, and I think that's important. I mean, a lot of people go through their entire lives without finding their why, which is you know, sad in some cases. Um, and some people find it really young. I think I was quite yucky to, lucky to find it when I did. Um, when, if you fail anything, say you had a bad day, would you go home and share your um, bad day with your parents? Would I? Sh would you? Would you? I don't know, I would, if I was perfect, yeah. And I would recommend others too, definitely. Sharing failings is one of the most important things because you then pick up from it. You learn from your failure. So I, I know somebody... Give us an example if you can. Uh, yeah, of course. So, um, well, I, I know somebody who says that he either wins or he learns. There is no failing, which I think is brilliant, because it's that beautiful. is the process of failure. Um, and as a side note, school t doesn't teach you that. School teaches a failure as a bad thing when it's not. It's a learning process. So, and if I was perfect, I'd go home and I'd share my <laughs> share my failures. But I'm quite proud. So sometimes I do just prefer to sit there and, and learn, try and learn from them by myself. But uh, for example, we had a, ser a series of interviews not too long ago where we went and we interviewed some CEOs of some great companies, uh, the top 100 companies to work for, as voted for by the Sunday Times. Um, and the video production didn't go very well. Um, so I thought, right, how am I going to change this next time? And it was, it was a case of working out. I had to use better software. I had to get better lighting. I had to learn more about video production. And then the next set of videos that we recorded were much better. And they will have more of an impact when they go out. So if as I said, a failure is just a process of learning. And if you're failing getting a job, it's expected. I mean, it is definitely expected. So specifically, if we're talking about employment, if you apply for a job and you get a rejection, ask for feedback. It, oftentimes, they won't be truthful with you because it's a hard truth telling someone why they didn't get yeah. the job. Um, and some employers will be cowards and they'll say, oh, sorry, <laughs> it just wasn't quite right. But the ones that are good are the ones that will reply back and say, right, when you come in, um, try to be more friendly, try to make more eye contact, or mm. uh, in a small way or in a big way, they'll say you weren't quite right in this aspect or that aspect, but ask for feedback when you fail. If someone gives you feedback really harsh, like you said, yeah. da, 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 would, you, would that hurt you? Would that put you down? Yeah, it, w it wouldn't hurt me. Uh, wait. You would? No, yeah, it you would probably would, hurt, but you've you got, got to take it on the chin and you've got to learn from it. Because you've got something behind it, okay, give me and I'll learn it. And I'll yeah, that's better. it. That's the way you've taken it, really positively. It's not like sometimes it's hard. If you ask yeah. for feedback and they give you a harsh truth, it's sometimes easier to take. What is difficult is when someone just lays a harsh truth on you and you're not ready for it. Yeah. That's, when, that's when I'm like, whoa. But no, it's definitely, um, definitely about learning from it. Young man, shall we come to you? Let's do it. Yeah? Let's do it. Go on, man. So it's a challenge I give you. Yeah. You've got three minutes, you've done it. Let's see what you say. Okay. Ikra Bangla. 
embrace the feedback, talk to your parents. With all of these people at your disposal, look around, everybody's local. If everybody's vocal in the lexicon of progress, our cries will no longer oppose civil strategies of divide and conquer. We can conquer and divide the pie. Everyone can have a bite. In a dog-eat-dog -dog world, you don't have to be a slave to your appetites. Let's show them that love and peace can live among us. With a platform like this, I'm grateful to Ikabunka. Wow. <laughs> wow, <laughs> mate. Ruben. Oh my like, God, little, little man. Song, song, song. Uh, there's two persons within you, my man, I tell you. Two... <laughs> live and love it. talent, man. Live and love believe talent. believe it. Definitely. In five minutes, you've done it. Amazing. Appreciate that. Amazing. Thank you. All right, I can I ask you the same question as well? Yeah. Um, how did you find your uh, dream come true? How did you find your way? Did anyone help you? And um, if they did, mm -hmm. Why did it? It would be interesting. Big shout out to my mum and dad. I just say <laughs> I, I didn't drop that in. Yeah, I didn't drop that in there. But big shout out to my mum and dad. Of course, of um, course. they must be proud of you, sir. Yeah. Go. D d um, in terms of finding my way, um, so growing up on a council estate, um, I grew up around a lot of older people, and so um, from the womb, I guess I got to see the kind of the consequences from the paths that they chose. And so that would guide me, that used to guide me on kind of um, what turns to take, what's right and what's wrong. So doing that and also experiencing all the stories that they had to tell um, with no voices, it kind of encouraged me to be the voice for our community and tell our story. Um, and from that, it gave me the confidence to say to myself, so what do you used to do? Give me an example. Like you used to, you've done this for them or mm. you've done that for them. Would that be? Um, literally just as a spoken word artist myself now, just using oh. my platform to tell their stories. Oh, great. Basically, um, yeah, sharing their stories, um, sharing the stories that they didn't get a chance to share, but that was kind of consumed with all of this life experience. Life experience that helped me and kind of got me to this place that I'm at now, where I can look back and say to myself, um, my parents, they, they weren't the best, they weren't the worst, but they done the best that they could with the resources that they had. That's very positive. Mm -hmm. I want to be telling somebody, especially young people when they come here, mm -hmm. is, he, is he tough enough to say in the TV, I love you, mom or dad? Is that... I, I, give, I challenge them sometimes. You never told us about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good for that. Listen, I love you, mum and dad, always. So Thank you said it quick, you got out of the way. No, no, no I'm, I know. I listen, I'm all, I'm all good. Um, yeah, I'll say a second, then you mm -hmm. can see your turn, maybe. I think, you know what? There's sometimes they de definitely they deserve that, yeah. honestly. You know, like you said, the word you used, whatever they had, mm. they've done their best. And that's the reason we love our, our mum and dad, yeah, definitely. Mm. Cool. Mum? Oh, great. Dad? I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Miles, back to you again. You know, um, how do we, I think we spoke about parents how to get involved with their kids' life. I think we've done that yeah. quite well. There are lots of uh, training courses, there are lots of projects trying to teach our young kids the um, skills they need. Why do you think, you know, still the failings? Why do you think that? Do you? Do you think? Well, yeah, I no. I, okay. For the for the failings that there are, yeah, um, I think that they're just not taught in the right way. Um, you got to be engaging when you're trying to tell someone about their future. And I can only speak from my direct experience. Is that? But when I left school, uh, I wasn't. I probably wasn't a good student. In fact, I wasn't by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and if, and a lot of my peers thought the same thing, um, probably of me. I mean, there was definitely no way anyone thought that I'd be teaching other people how to be employable, <laughs> hands down. <laughs> um, so, for me, it was about, I think for me, it was my own journey. It was about learning for myself what, I, what was out there and what I could do. And the advice that I give to others is to educate themselves. Um, you mentioned earlier that there's some great career days that are fun, that are engaging. Um, and that fun and engaging are probably two words that don't mean, a, you know, they lose their meaning when they're said so much. But if you're young and you're looking for a job, it's not about a job. Don't think you're going to just go somewhere and end up working there for the rest of your life. Like those days are long gone. Find what you love. 
and then turn that into a way you can make money. And I promise you, it's easier said than done. Um, it's easier done than said. It's, it is easy now. I mean, there is no better time to be alive. There is no better society to live in than right here and right yeah. now to make yeah. something of what you love and make mm -hmm. something of yourself. That might not have been the case for, for my parents' generation, um, but it is now. So for kids who are doing it, I'd mm -hmm. say find what you love and follow it. And for parents who are skeptical, I'd say just trust. Trust in what, where they're going and what they're doing, um, mm -hmm. and hopefully it'll work out. Is there any specific places they can go to? Is there, do you yeah, have they, well, they top of your head? Use the internet. Um, okay? more than anything else so find career days find recruitment agencies I mean recruitment agencies get paid to get you jobs how does it work I mean I how does a recruitment agency yeah work? How okay does it work? So, so there's two different setups um, but in essence you will if I'm a recruitment agent which I suppose in a way I am um, and someone like your son needs a job uh, we will look at what they we think he suits well at um, we will find a employer that we work with who is in need of a career, uh, in need of a young person to start a new career, um, and we will match those together. It is totally free for a young person. So for parents and for young people alike, if you ever go to a recruitment agency that isn't free, there's something wrong with it. Um, and the way that recruitment agencies make money is by charging the customer or the client uh, for that placement. If I ask you how many of them do, how many do you know, say in Tower Hamlet, how many of you... Well, recruitment agencies, yeah. oh, they are coming out of the woodwork. There are really? hundreds. In London, thousands, possibly tens of thousands. And for every single sector imaginable, every sector, IT, finance, um, music, industry, mm -hmm. media, there is something for everyone. So find a recruitment agent and they will help you a lot. I mean, it's in their best interests to coach you as a young person to, f to, be, to be employable. Because if you don't get the job, they don't get paid. So it is definitely in their best interests. So I'm, uh, I'm an ignorant person. I don't know how to do this thing. So if, what do I do? So I go and so I've got this. You just you so Google recruitment Google? agency London. That's it. Um, and even if you don't, even so the first few that pop up, even if you don't think, oh, they don't really sound right to me, give them a call, speak to them, and learn from, learn from each interaction. Because they will give you advice. Um, if they're a nice one. <laughs> Mad. <laughs> but, but Google recruitment agency in London. Um, I wouldn't. I mean, I don't necessarily think they're the best way for young people to get jobs. I think you should go out there on your own. But if you're struggling and you want to learn from someone who's got experience, call that up. That is first step. And yeah. ask. Yeah. Oh, for, definitely for a first step. Definitely. Um, and yeah, they. I mean, they do their job. They definitely do their purpose. Robin, do you have any advice for our young people that are looking for a job? They haven't done it before. They don't know what to do. They don't have a choice mm. as well. But they would do anything. At least weekends, just to get some money, so put in a pocket and be norm, mm -hmm. normal person. Because that, anything in your pocket, you're always going to struggle. Yeah. No confidence. Yeah. When you go home, uh, not a happy faces. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, there are a lot of things you know work, works in that. But yeah. What do you, they should do? Um, I agree with everything Miles was saying. Mm -hmm. um, to build on from that, I would say when you're in the interview and you're sitting across the table from this male or female, um, and they're they're wearing a professional attire, they're using a professional language. I would say to prepare yourself for that, read, read books, read as many books as you can on any and every topic. You know, they say if you want to hide um, gold from somebody, hide it in a book, you know. So um, when you're reading a book, it's teaching you how to um, use these words to your favour, it's teaching you how to expand your vocabulary. You know, you're learning all of these things, you're able to escape. Um, and you're able to mold yourself into the person that you need to be. So when you're sitting in front of this person, um, this employer with their nice shiny suit on, you can be confident in knowing that you know what you're talking mm -hmm. about and using the correct words to engage them and get the job. So Sometimes, you know, for a young person, they mm. would say, I don't want to wear a suit. I never wear a suit. Mm. I don't want to do that. I don't want to put a tie on. I know it's a challenge for them. They have mm. to pretend something else. Mm. Just mm. for a job. It's sometimes it's challenging. It's the, it's sometimes it's just the image that they've yeah. got. They've got so to I just think mm. You have to, you've got no choice. Mm. You just have to do it. Mm. You just not go and you think whoever you are, don't care who you are. You're here for a job, you've got to do what I say, you know, I'm yeah. expecting from you. You just got to do it, it's no choice. And also, um, like some of the things that we teach on our workshops, we say to them that as a person going into this interview, you don't have to be yourself. You can take on a character, you know, and embrace that character so you're playing somebody else when you sit in front of this person in a suit. Wear your suit, you know, use words that you don't normally use. 
tell them how much you want to be a part of their company. Put on an act, essentially. It's not going to be made up or it's not going to be a lie because it's coming from you. But you don't have to go in there feeling uncomfortable. You can take on this character that gives you the confidence and um, the expression to get what you need to get out of this five, ten minutes. But would you wear a suit? Sorry, would you wear a suit? Absolutely. There are, but there are also, on the flip side of that, there are also thousands of jobs, tens of thousands, that don't require mm -hmm. you to wear a suit at all. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, more than tens of thousands. So there is, if, if, if you are objective, if you, because uh, I, I never thought I'd like the idea of an office lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would. And it, it turns out that actually I don't mind it. Um, but if I didn't, there is definitely many avenues for me to take. I, was, I used to like music. I've never seen someone on a, wearing a suit on the stage, <laughs> and so, and it, unless we're going back as far as jazz. I mean, you can wear whatever you want when you're on stage. Mm. Uh, footballers don't wear suits. I mean, I, I don't know why I keep mentioning football. Mm. I'm not mm. all that into it. But something I actually did want to mention, um, and it's quite useful. So I mentioned very briefly that uh, we did a series of interviews with CEOs and managing directors of companies. Um, and the questions that we asked them, among many, were what do you actually look for when you're employing? Mm. Um, and as a result of that, they spoke a lot about interview experience. And they said there's two main things that they look for when someone is interviewing with them that will make them stand out beyond anything else. Uh, Ruben mentioned one. One is preparation. Most of them said, you have no idea how many people come through our door without having prepared. And it literally takes between half an hour and an hour to be brushed up beyond any other candidate to know more about any other than any other candidate. You just have to put in that little bit of time. Mm. So prepare, know more, but know a little bit about the company. And if you can find out actually who's interviewing you, look at their social media. Find out if they like going skiing. Because showing that proactiveness, that little bit of preparation, will set you apart from everyone else. Uh, the second one was honesty. Um, they said so many people just write the same things in their CVs. Mm -hmm. They just say, oh, I'm great at communication, mm -hmm. I'm a team player. And they see that every single day. So when yeah. you go into an interview room, be honest about what you are, who you are, and what you want. Because they don't see that often. You'd be surprised. I mean, when I speak to my friends and they go into interviews, they have all these pre-scripted answers that they've learned and they've memorized. But when I speak to the MDs and the CEOs, they just say, oh, just give us honesty. Mm -hmm. Just tell us what you actually want because then they, as the employer, have a responsibility to provide a job that's good for you. Maybe you weren't perfect for the role that you applied for, but if you're actually honest about what you're good at, what you're bad at, I mean, how you are, they will find something for you. Sometimes, you know, what happens with the young people is, um, they say, I've got a CV here, I've got my stuff here, I've got papers here, what do I need to do more for? Uh, mm. But like you said, if you, you know, do some research about that company itself, mm. about the people you're going to see, and more about, I think that makes it more like a home, isn't it? Mm. That person knows about us quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. and be no, brave. Yeah. Be brave um, about the way you apply for jobs. So what would you look for? Say you've got everything, you've got a CV, you've got everything ready. Mm -hmm. So you're applying for a job, you're going there. What would you look for for that company? What would you search for? What would I, how would I find out about the company? Yeah. Don't, I'd say don't just go on their website. <laughs> I mean, the website will tell a lot, but it will tell something that everybody can see. Mm. So find out how long they've been active. Find out uh, how many struggles they've gone through. And the places that you look for that are, a Twitter feed will tell you a lot. It will tell you the changes more than a website does. The average website of a company is updated around every six to eight months. So uh, like they change the actual content. Um, mine is less than that, to mm. be honest. So I'd say be creative. There was a story once, there was a guy, he said he had his last 200 pounds. And he wasn't sure what he was going to do with it. So he bought a billboard on the side of a bus stop. And he put a picture of him there with his thumbs up saying, I'm looking for a job. I've heard that story. If you want to employ <laughs> me, please do. Mm -hmm. He put that out you know, nine, between 9 a.m. And, and midday. He had over 10 or mm -hmm. 20 job offers. Same situation. There was a guy who just came out of university. And you can Google this story. Um, and he just stood in King's Cross Station with a piece of paper that said, mm -hmm. I, have a, it was, I think it was a 2-1. I have a two on degree, please ask for a CV next to a, a commuting train. Mm. Thousands of people walked past him and he got three or four job offers because he was brave. Mm. Both of them were brave. They put themselves out there and they were different. They didn't just apply mm. yeah. in the same way that everyone else did. Mm. So but they were serious. It yeah, shows. Mm. it shows and it shows proactive, mm. it shows it shows a lot of things. That one act shows a lot of things that the employers want to see. Building so on from that, mm. not to cut you. No, no, it's fine. Um, like as you were saying, there was a story where um, somebody was applying to a fashion company. So they, written, they wrote their CV on a Converse and they sent the Converse into the company and they got the job. 
you know so um perfect one thing that i would say is know your industry know what kind of profession you're getting into and target your cb towards that i'm not saying sending mm. the converse but for example if you're applying to a film company maybe make um, a short film a about yourself or you know, a recruiting it. studio yeah make a make a little recording of how mm. or, of your work be a cv a CV isn't law. You don't, by law, have to provide a CV. You don't have to write it this way or that way. It's a creative mm -hmm. thing. It is a creative process. Um, and if you're applying for a job you really want, find a way to spend the extra 5, 10, maybe 20 minutes to make your application different. It doesn't even have mm -hmm. to be better. Just make it different. Um, there are some small companies or big companies, I don't know, they're dodgy ones. You know, like dodgy means you apply for a job in online and they say, oh, you've got, you got a job, man, mm. come for an interview and blah, blah, blah. And they uh, recruit young people and, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So what do we do? Because my son, actually, the first day when he, after he, he applied for it, and he said, Dad, I've got two offers already, man. I'm going to do you mean commission-only type jobs? Things yeah. like that, yeah. yeah, yeah like that. So uh, there's, a, there's a website called companycheck.co.uk. Um, HMRC, so do offer this service as well, but it's harder to navigate. Check the company is registered, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Check it's registered. Google that company's name with reviews next to it, um, because it will tell you everything you need to know. Um, if it's a good company, they will do everything they can to market themselves, mm -hmm. like every company would want to do. Do you know what I mean? There will be a Facebook page, mm -hmm. there will be a Twitter page, mm -hmm. they might even have a YouTube channel. Like, you will find a lot about the company. If it's a bad company, you will see it straight away. I mean, and you're right, there are a lot of those companies, so for, it's a parent's responsibility as well as a son, uh, as well as a uh, child to, to search for that. I actually went, uh, the first job interview I ever had was with an illegal wine broking firm, and they offered me the job, and uh, it was a toss up between that or selling office supplies. Um, and, I and it's one of those decisions that you look back on, and I thought, wow, if I'd taken, mm. if I'd turned up for work at this, because I didn't know it was illegal, my parents didn't know, um, we had no idea. So. If I turned up for work there, where would I be now? Do you, do you wow. know what I mean? Yeah. So um, definitely be careful, I'd say. Be careful. Because I remember when he said, I've got two interviews, I said, where are you going? He said, oh, um, this company, blah, 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 blah. And um, especially the mother was pushing him, saying, look, are they OK? You're young. Are they and she mm. was really cautious. And I said, look, it doesn't matter. Let him go and test himself. Let him mm. go and fail or win, whatever. Yeah. He'll learn it. Mm. But she he said, no, 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 no. What if they do you want? Blah, blah. She was just pushing and pushing and pushing. And then he came out, he saw the review, just like you said. He said, oh, dear, he said, do you want? What wow. was it? Do you remember? Uh, no, but it just ran down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. So you expect they to be really mm. uh, good, but they know actually they are. Because yeah. a job offer from anywhere is so exciting. That's the hard bit, is that if mm. you get offered a job, you want it to be true. Don't, do you know what I mean? You exactly. want it to be true. Exactly. So um, I think it was also about finding that balance, as you were saying, between um, you as parents doing your investigation on the company, but also um, letting the young people, um, giving them enough freedom to make those mistakes yeah. and go for those interviews and embrace that learning curve. Mm. Okay, we've got three minutes left mm -hmm. to um, conclude. Um, so one minute for you, for our viewers. How do we become a one nation or connected, like your point? It would be interesting to think um, that's, that's a broad question. How do we become more connected, I think we need to embrace each other's stories a bit more. Um, as you walk out, you can see a lot of people are like in their own world, kind of in their own bubble, just concerned with what they're doing. I feel like we need to um, be more open to interactions on the streets, um, with family, with friends, all of the above. Um, yeah, so be more open, I would say, leave more time for socialising in person. So um, put down the phones, put down the Instagrams, the TVs. Not even put them down, but just um, as much as time as you concentrate to those things, concentrate the same amount of time or enough time to face-to-face -to -face interactions, to socialising with your peers. Um, and also, I would say, embrace your, embrace your strengths, embrace your flaws. Um, a lot of the time, people don't really... They, they don't really know how to compliment each other or say, do you know what, you're the, you talk a lot, for example. But that's a good thing. Like, that can be looked at as a good thing depending on how you manipulate the energy within, your, within yourself. So I think um, I'll say to people, champion yourself a bit more. 
um, and champion each other. Mm -hmm. You've got a half minute to say something to our viewers. Regarding okay, well, just jobs. thank you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Um, I, no, that was great. I was happy, very happy to listen to Ruben. Um, and thanks for, yeah, and hopefully if you are a parent, you'll have something new to speak about with your kids. Um, and if you're a young person, you'll go out and find some, a great career. So best of luck from, you from, know, thank you for from all of us. Time. Honestly, I really, really enjoyed it. And it was really, for me, it was really educational. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure our viewers enjoyed it too. So I hope to see you guys again. Dear viewers, mm -hmm. thank you for staying with us. If you said anything really didn't like, don't worry about it. And uh, it was just like a normal conversation. And I enjoyed it, honestly. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah. And you look after yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.